I know Julie is uh, coming, although not here yet. I've just left her at building 41. Welcome to Louise. And to our two uh, members of the public who are, um, I'm not quite sure you're on youth training scheme. That's probably our work experience scheme. So welcome uh, to this council meeting. Pleased to see you. Uh, welcome, Matt. Joseph, thank you for the heads up on that. Uh, Jonathan Sean and Marie Fuller, uh, all of her help she does in um, getting these meetings organised and, and running <laughs> and running. So we appreciate that. Um, apologies and changes in membership. Well, there are some changes, but yeah. Uh, Chairman, um, it's just really one change. I mean, obviously we've had a, a slight change to the membership of the committee since the last time you met because of annual council um, but councillor bacon has sent his apologies and councillor jones evans should be here at some point to substitute for him you're all happy with that it is what it is really yeah okay um minutes page five to eight of our uh pack any confirms a true record, any comments, any questions, any actions out of them even? Sorry. Sean, sure. no actions. Are we happy to accept those? Let's do it. Prop. Thanks, Ray. There's some dissent. Thanks, Gary. Uh, those in favour, please show. Thank you. Any declarations of interest? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, pub oh, public question time. No members of the public. Oh, we, we could allow the to work uh, <laughs> since they ask questions. If you've got any interest in this whatsoever, we're happy to have your questions far away. Being none. Uh, finance report for Newport Hub, page nine and ten. Uh, Sean, will you give us an update on that, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, it's very early in the year, and the forecast reflects um, the first two months, April and May. However, quite encouraging at this stage. It shows that net improvement against budget forecast at end of year of twenty thousand. Um, the key points to note are the income forecast um, is 39,000 up on budget, of which 13,000 is leasing income. Um, on the flip side of that, um, we're showing a slight overspend on premises, um, which is mainly due to a forecast increase in electricity costs against budget, of nearly 13,000, and a small overspend on operational equipment. Um, we're quite confident in those figures at the moment, as I would say, it's a forecast based on two two months to date. And obviously that will be refined as each month goes on and we're imminently due the, the June report, um, which will further increase the accuracy of those forecasts. Welcome, any questions? Thank you, Sean. Uh, any questions, John? Just as a clarification, it's uh, the, what does FY stand for? In the first column? In terms of 22-23, that's full year. Right. I, I guess um, jo Jonathan may be, or Sean, or either of you, give us an idea about the income. I mean, with all this better weather we're having, we should be picking up lots of uh, uh, temporary birthing, shouldn't we? But it, it, what, what does that look like right now? Uh, most of the permanents are for the year, so that's from uh, April to uh, next year. Um, most of that's either on a uh, payment plan or being paid lump sum. Um, visitors' numbers are increasing, which is good. Um, so hopefully the weather will hold and it will continue increasing. We've got a couple of months left. Um, I think it's 
so if it was a bit luck, it will continue. Uh, we'll have a slight spike this month for June. Um, it's, there was the Idlewild Festival, which for some strange reason we get slightly busier. Hopefully the visitors will keep coming. Yeah, we're happy with this. It, I mean, it, to a certain extent, is what it is, but uh, we we do need to keep a little oversight over it. Hope our birth, what's our birthing rates okay? Are they right? Are our birthing rates okay? Moment we have about 15 to 20 swing moorings up to most of them will take a seven meter. We've got three that will take a nine, but they're quite shallow. And we've got two um, which are confirming the best size boats we can get into them, but they're going to be somewhere between 10 and 8 meters, I would imagine. Um, but they're not overly deep. Um, and both of these are 100 pounds for. And two mooring per, per meter per year. Two mooring is seventy pounds per meter per, per year, and our are two per meter per night. Thank you for that. Well, uh, Karen, sure. Looks like we've nothing to do. We just had the report. <laughs> it's not even Mark. We have to do anything. We've had them. Thank you very much. We appreciate the constant updates on uh, the uh, management of the uh, harbour. Uh, how about Ventnor, Sean, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, similar story with Ventnor. Obviously, same reporting period and same forecast basis. Um, obviously, as you will see, there is a significant improvement um, in the forecast for Ventnor. Um, Members will be aware um, the management contract was met at Ventnor Harbour for five years, which is meant for the 1st of April, and that places all of the operational responsibilities, including the seaweed removal, with the management contractor. Accordingly, we're forecasting a 46,000 underspend against budget. Last time I can remember a forecast overspend for Ventnor. So it's quite a straightforward account now, based on it's the income um, and the management fee contractor. Thanks, Sean. Uh, any comments? Any questions on that? Good, good, good to see that it's it's mostly. Um, yeah, I'll come to you, John. Uh, mostly uh, in a different position from when it was with us trying to clear the seaweed. So, it looks like a good positive uh, situation we've got into, John. It's just some information, really. Um, so I've, I've been off this committee for a number of years, and it's been a disaster, Ben. Can you give us a bit more detail on the on, on who is the management company on what, what, what how, how that's working? That's John, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But uh, and I, I I appreciate that you're new to the committee, but we we've been through this a number okay. of times. So I'm happy to yeah. allow that to happen. But we have been all through this uh, very, 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 before we very decided please, please. Yeah. before we decided on who we were going to appoint, and we went out to attend the process and all the rest of it. But happy for you to explain who it is. Yeah, if it helps, um, I've got a briefing note which I circulated to a previous Harbour Committee, which I can forward to you, John, which sets out the chronology, the process we went through, who the bidders were, etc. John, sure. any further comments? We're whipping through this. This is good. Well done. Senior Harbour Moss report, pages 13 to 18. Uh, Jonathan? Right. Um, as you can see, um, only for the first two months, um, the date of this meeting. Um, but I can update you on the numbers of our overnight visitors. Um, so in April we had 73. May we had 170. For June up to today, uh, we've had 330. So um, and roughly. About 120 of those nights were for the Iron White Festival. It uh, worked quite well for, for us. Um, 
operationally, we've been reasonably reasonably quiet. Um, we've been obviously all of the checks and everything else have been carried on. No major incidents. Um, we have had numerous events out down there. One of them is we had the British um, Litter Trust that set up a testing centre in the harbour that worked well. Uh, we also had Riverfest that was very well attended. Uh, that happened. Okay. Um, um, some of the power, um, final bits of the power washing was completed uh, on the pon pontoons. Um, had a little bit of issues with our power supplies, but we've got quotes from um, contractors to start sorting them out. Nothing major to uh, uh, overuse by some some of them um, and some of them due to the weather. Yeah. Um, 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 obviously we had at the tail end of last report we had the fire of Sabi, a Sabi that was on the trolley. Um, that was completely finished in the month Sorry, beginning of um, so the boat got removed, uh, pontoon was inspected, and we were very lucky with the wind direction, so we had no damage to our pontoon. However, quite incredible considering the boat burnt to the water line, um, but it didn't touch our pontoon. Very lucky with the wind direction. Um, Um, other than that, it's just been sort of basic maintenance. Um, you know, our shower door code decided to pack itself in, so we had to replace it, but that's done in house. Um, the other one we've got is uh, we had to advertise for a new duty hub master uh, as one of our current ones. Um, opted to go for a zero contract, so we still have him when we need him, but there is an advert in Tinko for a new position, sorry, to place him uh, 28 hours uh, of contract. Um, I've had a fair few uh, responses. Other than that, all gone well, and the festival busy, but Thanks, Jonathan. It's all going well. <laughs> you know what happens when we say those things, don't you? Uh, right. Yes. Um, just curious to what the cause of the fire was on the Savia boat. The insurance company. Any findings? Um, uh, we haven't been told of a, a official reason or anything else. Um, I think it may be due to the amount of damage that was done, um, but the insurance company has never dealt with it. So I think they're quite happy, as happy as they can be. I mean, pay out for a boat, but yeah. Matt. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, thank you for the report, Jonathan. And, and, and just to say thank you um, for the tour of the Harbour Estate you took us on, which um, uh, it was only myself and the chairman on, on that. Um, journey but it was it was brilliant again you know just to see what comes under the responsibility of the harbour is quite immense really um and um and you know to look at where we were a few years ago when this committee started every time you see the progress that's been made and it's it's quite immense so um it's uh you know really good to see that just a couple of things one is um i wanted to acknowledge your um enthusiasm to see as many things going on on the um harbour as possible, which um, I found really encouraging to hear that. Um, and also, um, I wondered if there was anything further from the conversation we had about additional pontoons up at the Folly and whether there was any mileage in looking to do that, um, you know, in preparation for if they're needed rather than waiting until we're at a point where they're needed, if, if that makes sense. It's, um, you know, I wonder if now is the time to actually invest in doing something there now. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Matt, for reminding me of that. Thank you for thanking Jonathan, because uh, those of you that miss it, I know Ray gets it on, but uh, you missed a fantastic day. And you did the lunch was fantastic, wasn't it? You know, that you all missed. But 
<laughs> but, but yeah, and then we poodled about on the water for a little while after the heavy lunch. It was great. But uh, I'm joking, Thomas. <laughs> Uh, Matt has raised a good point that we spoke about. Should, could we just talk around that a little? Because it may be the time to um, to consider investing in those pontoons. Uh, any views on that? Thanks, Matt. Um, this was the when we put the replacement pontoons in. Um, there was a a extra pile that gave us an, an expansion without having to bring in boats again this is on the east side of the river closer to island harbour um, we got an extra pile driven in that, that will allow three seven and a half meter pontoons to just be floated in so we can extend it um, our waiting list is not huge so we could probably fill them but i think it's probably worth visiting what our visitors numbers are first because we could possibly use the backside for visitors on permanence um, I think at this moment in time it's probably spend the money fixing the walls and the other things at Newport um, but it's good that we've got the option so then if we need them um, the other one with that area is quite shallow I've just picked up the results from the survey that was done a week ago so we can actually nail down exactly how much water we have in there so um, it's good to have but probably not yet yeah I mean the, the reason I, I brought it up again I, I guess was to to just um sort of I don't really understand what income could come from it, but it just, it, you know, I was looking at how it could generate income going forward because, you know, while it might not pay for itself immediately over the long term, it would probably pay for itself um, in addition to other works that, that are needed in the harbour and, and bring out a, 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 an ongoing income. But um, obviously I'm, I'm looking to you guys really to um, probably guide us on that. And well, probably Ray's got as good an input as anything, but as well, but um as to what the need is out there but thank you that's why i brought it up basically um the rough income would be um be about 36 meters so we'd be able to get about 30 meters of boats on there so we're looking at about 30 uh three grand boat both, both sides so it would be about six prices think about seven thousand Uh, it's so basically you can pay for itself. Um, my thoughts are similar to Matt's that given uh, the marina charges have gone up 10% and they seem to be doing regularly, people are uh, asking to. I started looking for alternative boats. Uh, uh, the river moorings will probably come into that. Um, like you say, you've got money to spend elsewhere first. It is something that we should be considering in the future to extend our. Uh, I'm looking. I would like to save some money, <laughs> although my bike's quite big. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, Jonathan's quite right. Um, money we have allocated in the harbour is in the harbour walls at the moment, and that's the spring fence to work, and that's just kind of set aside from the droughts tender in the autumn. I think in relation to the potential for the folly, um, additional pontoons, I think what we could do is put Jonathan Siggers into a business case and take those forward for either a capital bid or an investor save bid. If the investor save bids, if they pay for themselves within four years, and if favourably, we can look to develop that. Um, um, and there is a potential for Carthy into King to actually deliver that as well. Um, so we, we are looking at the folly, the whole folly area, like that forward in the autumn. Uh, Sean, um, j just in principle, can we move money between Ventnor and Newport? Revenue or capital? 
there were money. I'm just asking in principle. Um, subject to agree agreement of the Director of Finance. So if there were money in Ventnor, could consider an investment in Newport with it. Okay. Um, I, I really am going to suggest that from, I get the feeling, I'm going to suggest that we we have a not an extensive business case, but some idea about, I, I, it just seems to me that we should be looking seriously at finding a way of investing in some ex-pontoons. Uh, I don't know what any of you feel about that, but uh, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, I think, Chairman, um, what um, Sean's just suggested probably is a good good starting point, really. If that's something that could be done this year, that we could, you know, in preparation for, uh, you know, at least we've got the business case. If it's something that we, we can't find the, the funding for, but we there is other ways of finding it throughout the um, one of the other harbours, maybe, um, you know, it's it potentially an investment that will bring a return is something we must must consider. So um, I, I think um, I think that without going silly on a business case uh, and spend a lot of money on that. It's something that we can do internally without too much work. It's something maybe we could bring back to a further meeting for consideration. Uh, Carrie. Thank you, Chair. Um, actually, discussing the subject of I, I, I agree. If there's money spare, then it should be put into expanding facilities elsewhere. Um, but as the Bentner councillor, I wouldn't like to see money disappear from Bentner Harbour when it could be invested back into Ventnor Harbour. It won't disappear, don't worry. Um, <laughs> I, I think with the change of management, it might be an opportune moment to try and do something else with Ventnor and to try and expand the provision there. I know it's too small, and too much with it. If some sort of consideration could be made to maybe expand the provision at Ventnor to make that more of an, an attractive place to go, the harbour, certainly. To what extent is our new contract going to uh, impinge and hinder that? Um, it, it won't impinge it. Certainly, the, the management contractors are looking at what they can do, they can do to invest into it as a visitor experience. Residence hall as well. Um, obviously, they're only a couple of months into it. Um, and I'd like to update on the, on the contract in a minute. Um, but they are looking at what they can do to invest. Um, um, they've got a five-year contract, but they're, they're, they're looking beyond that because they're, they're based in Ventnor. They, they want it to be successful. They want employment, which is what, part of the reason the harbour was set up. So they're very much on board with, with developing the harbour in partnership with yourself. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Uh, questions? I think we're pretty clear on that. Uh, Again, that's for just for us to note. It's not even for noting. Uh, Newport Harbour, outstanding actions, page 19 to 20 in our papers. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, as, as you'll see, the outstanding Port Marine Safety Code actions for Newport, um, there's only two issues remaining, both of which are ongoing reviews, uh, one of the website and one of the navigational risk assessments. Um, so they are continual work in progress and will remain on the list. The next annual audit is due the third week in September. That will also cover Ventnor. So a further report with an updated uh, action plan will come to the Harbour Committee in either December or January when the next schedule is brought. Thanks, Sean. Comments, no questions, no. Whipping through this. Uh, Ventnor Harbour Management Contract, Sean. Thank you, Chair. Um, Ventnor Harbour Management Company commenced on the 1st of April, as I mentioned earlier. Um, they submit monthly reports to us um, as the client, and they're in the same format as the Newport Harbour monthly reports Jonathan prepares, which are the basis for his bi-monthly or quarterly reports to Harbour Committee. Um, during the first couple of reports, they've confirmed that they've undertaken inspections to the infrastructure, so pontoons, mooring fleets, navigation lights. They've identified an issue with the navigation lights, which they're currently investigating. They've confirmed no incidents or dangerous occurrences or pollution, no complaints. And they've actually received one compliment, one written compliment from a, from a visitor to the harbour, because they've reintroduced visitor moorings, um, who said basically, it was very good to be back in Ventnor. Thank you for making us feel so welcome. So a little bit of positive feedback in a, in a very early stage in the contract. 
They've also ordered a new electric pump for the removal of the seaweed, and that's due to be fitted in the next two to three weeks. So obviously we're very keen to see how that works as opposed to the previous method. Um, they will be responsible for delivery of all requirements of the Port Marine Safety Code, which obviously Newport and Adentna would comply with because they're statutory ports. We've had an initial meeting with them and also with David Foster from Marico Marine, who's previously training um, to the committee. And there's a, meet, a further meeting next Monday with David and Jonathan to run through the draft documentation, which has been prepared for them data and which they've been doing some work on. So they are moving things forward. Um, Jonathan has been meeting with them on a weekly basis to discuss operational issues and make sure everything's okay and address any queries. Um, we'll probably drop the frequency of those meetings down to fortnightly and ultimately monthly once they're bedded in. Um, but at the moment, yes, positive feedback. Thank you for that, Sean. Comments? Barry, you happy with how um, Brent is going? I'm more than happy to find that some a visitor has been able to actually moor up in Brent Harbour. He was, <laughs> Gary. Don't get too excited. <laughs> it's not. It's not big enough for two. <laughs> It was an orange boat as well, by the way. But it wasn't a cheetah marine boat, was it? No, thank you. It was flying under an international flag. <laughs> We're happy with that. Uh, that just leaves any questions from us. It's really swift today, half an hour, and I appreciate that. Uh, don't think that because uh, the agenda is quite small today, um, I don't think that it's not an important uh, a committee to 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 sit on and to make decisions on as we do have done and continue to do. And uh, I do thank you in the in the kind of weather we're having to to, to turn up and help us in this uh, endeavour. Uh, any question? Any questions at all, John? Just a couple. A couple of observations. As I say, I've been away for a while, and it's um, really good to see how much progress has been made. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed about that. It's, it's, it's um, a huge improvement. Um, I, I just want to just touch on the when when we are if, again. It, maybe it's a case of you filling me in, Sean, with background papers on what what is our commercial development strategy for Newport in particular. I'd be interested to know more about the context of what we think we're where we're going with Newport, and how we how, you know what the what the plan is at the moment. Is that something you can provide with me on? Speak to or I, I certainly can, John. Um, basically, we're we're working with re regeneration in, in conjunction with the, the master plan for the regeneration. So we're, we're looking at managing our assets um, in a holding pattern, if you like, pending that investment coming forward to deliver that regeneration plan. Um, that's not to say we're not looking at opportunities, what we can do land as a, as, a, as a meanwhile use. Um, so no, more than, more than happy to share the, the regeneration plan if you, with you. Um, and I can give you uh, information on the leases we've got and the tenure of those, um, which, which committee members have previously had. So I can share that with you. Thank you for that, Sean. Any further? Uh, Rye, please. I'm just wondering if there's any updates on Ireland Harbour's particular problems. Any uh, outside companies making cases at all? No. Um, nothing um, has been passed to us officially. They seem to be operating uh, kind of like festival. They're still operating, um, but I haven't heard of any bids or going out to tender or anything. They're continuing to operate. That's right, Matt. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Um, oh, I know exactly what I was going to say. Sorry. Um, the um, Ray threw me off kilter when he made, said the words Island Harbour, you see, um, which has been a, a, a constant um, pain to me for the last 10 years as the councillor um, for a number of reasons. Um, of things, promises being made and little being delivered down there. Um, and, uh, and of course, now we're back to square one, aren't we, really, yeah. with it? Um, but who knows, perhaps um, someone new might come along that actually does what they say they're going to do for once. So, um, but what I was going to say is, is again, going back to, to the harbour, when we talk about regeneration of the harbour, I think, I think I would 
say that some regeneration's already happened down there. I think it looks good. It looks tidy. Um, lots, you know, the, the rubbish that was there years ago, which was hard to get rid of. It was hard to get rid of, and and these good people know that that I took some of the pain on that as well. I know they had to do the the deed, but I I took a lot of the pain. Um, and, and it and it looks good. You've got some really good quality users down there that the um a tenants um you know seeing what goes on in the old bus museum now is fantastic you know it's some real industry going on down there um and then you look at skates and um and what's been done in 4d sports there i mean he, that, that guy has done tremendously um and uh you know and attracts a lot of young people down there for his activities and has just expanded it again with a, another new experience down there uh, uh, in addition to the one we saw when we looked in there um, he's added something else and um so um you know I, I think there's some regeneration already happening happening down at the harbour and um i welcome more of it thank you thanks matt we we've seen a bit of that in ride a little bit you, you you have a small pebble in the pond and suddenly the ripples go out it's quite interesting to watch thank you uh julie thank, thank you chair i've been very quiet apologies for being late i got caught out on the in the cows uh, traffic mayhem um so yeah, just sort of pick up from what what Matthew's saying. Um, obviously, we've got a bit of leisure, a bit of time here now, and about the harbour regeneration. And Matthew and I had a really good session, didn't we, with the uh, the architects that are looking at the cultural um, uh, centre. Uh, really interesting the way they're looking at looking at holistically involving the town, all the other activities that are linked to culture across the town. And I think to say, Matt, I think we're pretty. Um, Pretty impressed with what they their attitude, and they they allowed us to as you as you um, described it as the uh, a hose of enthusiasm <laughs> from us. Uh, yeah, so so that you know that's good. I just want to sort of say thank you for all the support we've had um, across the council um, moving this uh, this you know uh, important, uh, ambitious, and you know could be a game changing uh, investment in, into the island, not just Newport. Um, and of course, a quick update um, regarding the steel yard. Obviously, you've heard me talk about the steel yard for a while now. A uh, quick update from we had this morning is that um, it's, they're just fine, fine tooth combing the legal agreement. So it's in alignment with the Isle of, with the Isle of Wight Council's agreement with, with the festival, which is obviously just, just been and gone. So it's making sure that's all aligned. And uh, so this should be a, a planning application, obviously for temporary use, uh, imminently really. So that would be another really useful, meanwhile, activity that goes alongside um, the 4D sports and everything else we've got down there. So, yeah, lots to be lots to be excited about, really. Thanks, Julie. Uh, I think we're about done. Wait a the submission. Um, just uh, for me, just on the coffee company on the other side of the river, is there, is there any news or update on that? What's happening with that? Um, we were due to receive a report today. Um, negotiations have taken slightly longer than, than anticipated. Um, so we're looking at bringing a report back um, in September. Um, we should have concluded negotiations and recommendation um, how we can take that site forward um, in the next couple of weeks with the, with the current leasehold tenant. So I guess it's moving forward. Thanks for that, Sean. Uh, and just on that note, there's no further questions. The next meeting, which maybe you, that will come to, is uh, 27th of September. That's on the website. You pick it up and you'll get uh, all the papers. But there we are, 27th of September. If there's nothing else, thank you. Oh, Joe, you're my gone then. No, just my apologies for that, for that Chair. Give my apologies for that. I think since there's been a realignment of the Cabinet roles, I think there's been a right realignment of cabinet roles and I've taken up heritage and I understand it was Councillor Bacon was sat on this as the heritage member, is that correct? There's, there's some little anomalies within the constitution regarding harbour which the monitoring officer separately. There's not just that. I have those two or three of you. Obviously the alliance group is going to get deeper from now so yeah. How does that? I'll wait to hear then. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, have a good summer. Thank you for all your help over the year and years before me and after me as well, for all of us that are here. Uh, that's what you smile. No, but you know, it's how it is. We, we're those, uh, what did he say? Here today, gone tomorrow, politicians was um, Robin Day said to uh, 
<laughs> what do you remember at the time of the Falklands War? That was uh, Louise wasn't uh, born at that time, I don't think. But that's what he said in an interview on Newsnight. You're a here today, gone tomorrow politician. Sean's done 30 or 40 years in this council. My goodness, it's uh, uh, it's it's uh, uh, longer than the great train robbers. Thank you all and have a good summer. See you next time.